What's good, YouTube? This is Stormy B Man, and I'm back with another pre fight video. Before we get started, I'd like to say shout out to the LDBC, the Lions Den Boxing Community, and Liberated Perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Coming up this Friday, November 27th, broadcast by Matchroom Boxing on the DAZN app. We'll see the return to the ring of Danny Jacobs, the Miracle Man, as he takes on Gabriel Rosado in a fight between two super middleweights scheduled for 12 rounds. The Miracle Man, Danny Jacobs, is returning to the ring for the first time since December 2019 when he last faced Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in a fight that saw Chavez quit in a fight where he was actually giving the magic man a little bit of trouble. With the record of 36 and 3 with 30 KOs, the magic man is 4 and 2 in his last six bouts with his two losses having been dropped decisions to both Canelo Alvarez in May of uh, 2019, as well as in March of 28, 2017, a unanimous decision loss to Gennady Golovkin. This will be a chance for Jacobs to get the ball rolling again in a positive direction. But Gabriel Rosado may have something to say about that who seemingly is hungry again, looking to fight a top fighter in what we have in Jacobs. He's actually three and three in his last six bouts with his uh, decision losses against Matt Selecki that happened in March of 2019. Then going back to April of 2017, Martin Murray decisioned him and then in 2016 he lost a de decision to Willie Monroe Jr. His victories have been against Humberto Gutierrez Ochoa and he had a split decision against Luis Arias and also a TKO victory over Glenn Tapia. The thing about this fight is this if Rosado comes motivated he could possibly catch Jacobs slipping. Jacobs have had long breaks in between his fights and he didn't look that good when he was facing Chavez Jr. It was a fight, as I said, that Chavez was really pouring it on and decided not to continue. He had a sizable advantage over Jacobs in that fight where he probably rehydrated up at least two weight classes above the super middleweight division. But that being said, Rosado is the type of fighter, he's very game and he's experienced from being in there. Like I said, his record where he has had 25 victories, lost 12, he's had 14 KOs. But the thing about Rosado is that he brings his lunch pail every single time when he steps into the ring. Jacobs will not be able to sleep against this opponent, but I don't think he will. I think that Jacobs will be coming out trying to put the pressure on Rosado, and he is also going to try to overwhelm him with activity. Against a quality fighter such as Alvarez, Deverinchenko, and Golovkin, he was a little bit reluctant to let his hands go, and he feared what was, I won't say feared, but he was apprehensive about what may be coming back at him. So against Rosado, who doesn't have a lot of knockouts on the record, he may be willing to take more chances and open up to a greater degree in this match. But it could still be an action-packed fight. Will Rosado be able to hurt Jacobs at all? Who knows? Jacobs is now 33, 
Rosado is 34. So they're right neck and neck in the age department. And with the fights that they fought, these men have suffered a bit of wear and tear. Jacobs has a 73 inch reach and Rosado has a 71 and a half inch reach, which they are both the same height. So with only a two inch reach advantage, we'll see how Jacobs is able to work his jab and see if he's gonna stay disciplined behind a jab. He may opt to go for power punches and in exchanges he may have an advantage due to Rosado not having the punching power. But you have to be careful because if you wade in and you give a guy or give you a shot that you don't get a chance to see, you can still be put in peril. This is the type of fight that is supposed to be a showcase with Jacobs to bring him back. Will he finally face someone like a Demetrius Andre or even get a chance again against Canelo Alvarez? Who knows? Matchroom is putting him out there now at the end of the year to see what he can do. It's been a year since he last fought. So we'll see if he's able to shake the ring rust off. We'll find out if during the pandemic he's been able to hold his weight well. We just don't know. There are a lot of questions about the fighters of 2020 due to what the pandemic has brought to every one of them. But this is a fight, again, that Matchroom is putting out. So we'll, we can expect some action yet and still we can possibly expect some dull moments as well. Rosado's last fight was in December as well of last year. And so they've both had the same amount of time off. This could be interesting or it could be a snore fest, but I'll be tuning in and I hope that you will too. If Rosado for any reason whatsoever is able to pull off an upset, it will catapult him in the fray for being an opponent against a Golovkin, an Alvarez, even an Andre, who is also aligned with Matchroom. So what can happen is a new series of fights with this gentleman getting an opportunity. And I love the fact that men who hang around long enough to get that opportunity and a payday, they can actually go out of their career having taken some serious notes along the way. But all in all, I'm looking for a late round stoppage by Danny Jacobs, possibly due to cuts. Rosado always happens to have cuts in his fights and Danny is a marksman when it comes down to something like that. He'll be looking to take advantage. You know, what, what are your thoughts? How do you see this one shaping out? Um, I'm going with Danny Jacobs, late round stoppage on cuts, TKO, something like that. And he'll see what's next for 2021. You can leave comments and we can discuss it. Until the next time, this is Stormy B-Man. That's all I have for you. Let me know how do you think this one is going to shake out. And until the next time we speak, everyone stay safe. Peace to you all. Happy holidays.